Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. We've got several things to talk about today, and we're going to start off in the upper to mid levels of the atmosphere. Check this out. So the defining feature of our weather story over the next uh, several days is going to be this kink in the jet stream here that we are going to refer to as the ring of fire for this video. Okay. And the reason we're calling it that is because there's a lot going on here that's uh, pretty concerning. Okay, first of all, on the underside of this, we've got a lot of warm air coming up from the south, and that's going to lead to some uh, very warm temperatures down here in some places that could probably use uh, a nice cool off. Coming in after that, all of that warm air is going to be coming in to this pretty progressive flow across the central U.S. where it's getting mixed in with some colder air from the north. And uh, this is a recipe for several rounds of significant severe severe thunderstorms over in this region over here, okay? So you've got warm air, uh, potentially dangerous uh, warm air in the south. You've got cool air coming down from the north. It's getting shimmied along very quickly by this flow. When you mix those things together, you get uh, several potential lines of thunderstorms and clusters of thunderstorms that move through this area, causing damaging winds, hail, tornadoes, and all that bad stuff. So, so that's what we're looking at for really the next several days. Watch how long this last year. We're going to go all the way out to, I don't know, Sunday before we're really done with the progressive flow there. Now it becomes less of a ring, I guess, uh, out here towards Saturday, but this is still going to be enough to potentially spark some big time thunderstorms as we get out towards July 1st. But watch, as we go farther into the future, uh, our weather pattern does change and that's going to, you know, cause even more things to happen. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Let's focus on this though. The ring of fire. What does it mean for you? Okay, so remember, the main thing that we're concerned about here is the severe weather that's going to happen on the outside of this ring. Starting off today, we do have two slight risks of severe weather up here for portions of Wisconsin, Minnesota, and the panhandle of Nebraska. That's for Wednesday, June 28th. We also have this big marginal risk up here, and anywhere in the dark green or the yellow, you guys could be dealing with some tornadoes today, some hail, some damaging winds. The damaging wind side is definitely going to be uh, the most concerning side today and that can also be said for tomorrow where we have a much larger area under that slight risk and we really think that we're going to have a beefy little MCS or mesoscale convective system slide right through this uh, risk area as we go through the day tomorrow. This could end up being just a really bad line of uh, showers and thunderstorms and if we get any sort of convection out in front of the main line we are also expecting a tornado threat tomorrow. Uh, right there in central Illinois, we do have a 5% risk of tornadoes. If it goes 10% uh, hatched, you know we're going to be live uh, tomorrow for this. But uh, looking at some of the recent data, it's definitely looking interesting. But the, the main threat almost certainly is going to be those strong damaging winds. And that's what we're going to highlight mostly as we take a look at the uh, future radar here in a second. But before we do that, son, you know we've got a day three risk as well. And it keeps following this ring of fire. We expect another beefy little system to form on Friday, June 30th, potentially impacting my neck of the woods and also Southern Ohio, West Virginia, back into Indiana. And then another MCS could form back here. Once again, it's just one after another. Got these systems kind of flowing through our ring of fire just like that. Now we are going to take a look at the NAM three kilometer model here to uh, inspect the future radar. But let me tell you something about these models and summertime convection. They suck. Okay, this is not going to be anywhere near uh, reality. It's just showing us a simulation of what could happen as we go into the future. And I just kind of want to show you the ring of fire and all the different possibilities that we have going forward. And it does show potential severe weather today. Okay, in both of our slight risk areas, you can see convection popping up over here. You can see it back in this region. It's not going to look exactly like this, but watch how that actually starts our MCS as we go into uh, tonight and into tomorrow. Now, this is definitely uh, potentially a real thing. We could have a morning convection type of system moving through Springfield, St. Louis, down into Indianapolis, maybe even all the way down towards Louisville and Nashville by the time we get into noon tomorrow. But, you know, is that going to happen overnight into the early morning hours or is it going to happen in the afternoon hours? The atmosphere is going to be so volatile in this area tomorrow and the next day. Uh, any little storm could spark a new mesoscale convective system. Um, and, you know, these models are just basically guessing. 
guessing uh, at any time of what's going to happen. The main thing that we're looking for here is that motion. Look, you see the ring of fire? You see how everything is following that general vicinity? That's what I would be looking out for. If I'm anywhere in this corridor right in through here, then I know to be extra weather aware over the next several days. We're not going to pay too much attention to the exact placement of these storms because that stuff is going to change big time. Here we are around 9 a.m. on the 30th and it shows another potential mesoscale convective system moving through the Quincy area. This is definitely a real possibility, but it could also be over here near Indianapolis or back here towards Omaha at this time. The models just aren't good at depicting uh, exactly what's going to happen. But several big time storms that look just like this one are going to move through. If I'm in Cincinnati, Louisville, Charleston, West Virginia, even up there towards uh, Chicago, back towards Des Moines, Topeka, St. Louis, um, Kansas City. I am definitely uh, preparing for uh, stuff like this. Ask our friends up there in Iowa, okay? You don't want to disregard any sort of system like this that could lead to major storms and, and straight line damaging winds. We've had one of the worst, you know, severe weather disasters of the last decade up here as a result of a pattern like this just a couple of years ago. So let me show you once again why we're so concerned about these storms coming up. Um, one of the things is just the massive amount of instability that's going to be available out here in the Midwest. Um, and there's going to be all these little potential um, convective systems that are going to be able to take advantage of it. Uh, we do expect somewhere between five and 6,000 uh, potentially, or, or at least four and 5,000 joules per kilogram of convective available potential energy out here for these storms to take advantage of at any time as we go through the day on Thursday. And guys, that's double what you normally see out here to lead to a good storm. All right. So if we do get uh, a massive storm system coming through and munching up all that instability, it is going to be uh, a very significant uh, situation. But this is the kind of thing that uh, requires a lot of now casting. It's hard to forecast these kinds of things. It's a miracle that we even know that it's possible. OK, um, so we're just going to hope for the best and, you know, hope that that morning convection leads to a decrease in the amount of instability out here uh, and all that good stuff. But as we go farther into the future, of course, our weather pattern will change. Once we get out of this pattern after about Saturday or Sunday, uh, we are going to see a little bit less of uh, a disruptive jet stream and more of a calm flow through the majority of the U.S. This will lead to some quieter weather, except for up here in the Pacific Northwest, we might have to watch for you know some some rain and some storms up there but for the most part things look a lot more stable after we get this ring of fire system out of here and that's going to help us out in a lot of different ways and one of the ways is all of our wildfire smoke that's been choking everybody out in the uh, Great Lakes and Ohio Valley region will be moving out and that'll happen pretty quickly here's what that's going to look like today you can see the pink areas and the orange areas that's where it's actually pretty thick as we go into tomorrow things are going to kind of fizzle out a little bit more and eventually once we get into this uh, pattern where our ring of fire moves out and it's not locked in here anymore uh, we'll we won't see any of this smoke it'll all be skedaddling out to sea so that's the main thing that we're watching out for. We're waiting for our ring of fire to stop. Uh, and just remember, at any point during this pattern, we're going to see several rounds of severe weather in this area right here. So make sure you guys are prepared for that. And make sure you're subscribed because we could go live at any time. This is the kind of thing where we're going to be on standby here. And uh, if we need to go live, we will. Uh, but it'll be a last minute decision. Also, because the storms are going to be affecting my neck of the woods, uh, if there's anything close enough, we might go chase it as well. We've got a very nice uh, chasing rig out here that we never get to use. So make sure you're subscribed here on this channel for that as well. If I ever do go live out in the field, it's going to happen right here on the extra channel. So that's it, I think. Uh, make sure you go to shopryanhall.com uh, to get one of these Weatherflow Tempest weather systems. We've got them back on the website now after having to take them down because you guys were buying too many of them. Okay. They were overwhelmed. They said, stop, we got to catch up. They're caught up and they're ready for more. Guys, these are the best home weather stations you can get. You stick one of these bad boys out in your yard and then on your phone, on your computer, however you wanna do it, you've got live data, it tracks it all. If you had the thing for 20 years, you can go back for 20 years and look at all these line graphs of temperature, dew point, lightning at frequency and distance in your backyard. It's beautiful, it's great. And there's all kinds of ways that you can integrate it with other apps and stuff. And of course, we are building a network 
of people who had these that hopefully soon we're going to be able to actually, you know, access some of this stuff during our live streams and help us, uh, you know, forecast the weather and all that good stuff. There's about a thousand of you guys out there with these uh, that you've got from our website. So that's going to help us out big time. If you want one, go to shopryanhall.com right now and get one. I promise you, you will not regret it. If you've ever wanted a home personal weather station with cool data, this is the one that you want to get. And that's all I got for you today. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.